If you are following my channel, you all probably know by now that I'm a huge football fan. And I host NFL Football Weekly Predictions and Post Game Analysis. When you hear the word sports, one of the words that come to mind is ESPN. Every day, millions, millions of Americans watch ESPN. And for all the sports fans, especially the ESPN Sports Center, it is one of the most popular sports programs in television history and getting to ESPN and getting to host on SportsCenter is huge huge guys and today I am super duper thrilled to have a special guest on my show who is the first Indian American anchor on a national sports network yes Kevin Gandhi, a name that resonates with every sports fan in America and one of the most respected and popular anchors at ESPN. Echoing Kevin's words from one of his speeches, you don't dream and wait, you dream and work, and work some more. From a 14-year-old boy who had a dream to be a sports anchor, who worked really, really, really hard, planning every step and making his way up to make his dream a reality, to become a household name on the largest sports channel in the world. In addition to being part of SportsCenter, Kevin has hosted NFL Live, Baseball Tonight, Outside the Lines, College Football Live, NBA Tonight, and the Women's NCAA Basketball Final Four. And he also hosted the Special Olympics World Games. He is a native of Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, and a proud Temple University grad. He was inducted in Temple School of Media and Communications Hall of Fame. Kevin Nagandhi and his success story of making his dream come true. Breaking all the barriers is an in inspiration to everyone. Please welcome Kevin Nagandhi. Hi Kevin, welcome to the show. Bobby, it's great to see you. I'm glad you could uh, invite me and have me here, so thank you. Wow, I'm thrilled to see you. And I'm excited to talk to you about sports. It reminded me of uh, my, uh, my sons who talk about sports all the time, but also, you know, when I was little, uh, I, I was the same way where sports dominated everything I did and, and all my conversations with my parents and my brother and my friends. Uh, so I was really excited that uh, I got the chance to talk to you. Great. So Kevin, I had watched so many videos about you and how yeah. your determination and hard work paved the way to make your teenage dream a reality. Yes. How does it feel to be the first Indian American anchor? to serve on a national sports network. It feels amazing, Abby, because uh, obviously it was my dream come true. Uh, since I was 14 years old, I wanted to come to ESPN. So uh, to, to be on, on TV every single night and have my mom get the chance to watch me uh, where she lives uh, every day and have my my family and friends watch, and I get to talk about, uh, you know, for example, Thursday I get to talk about the Eagles. Last night I had the chance to talk to Doris Burke about the Sixers. So I get to talk about the teams I grew up uh, following, but also all the other uh, sports that I love. Um, by the way, uh, how old are you? I'm eight. You're eight. Come over here. I want you to meet my uh, my eight-year-old son. This is Brandon. Hi. Hi. Brandon uh, follows sports uh, as much as you do as well. Um, he's a big, big uh, NBA fan. That's amazing. So when I look at your story, you had a clear vision and a clear goal. So what was that aha moment when you realized that, yes, this is what I want to do, be a sports broadcaster? Uh, it was when I was 14 years old. Um, before I wanted to be an architect because I liked to draw and I was doing really well and I was doing a lot of art classes. Um, and then I took a class and I didn't really like to do uh, some of the stuff that we were doing in that class when it came to architecture. It, 
it wasn't what I thought it would be like. So I remember being, uh, you know, a 14 year old boy watching basketball, college basketball one day in my living room and they were profiling a basketball player who was at the free throw line. And the two broadcasters said, that guy wants to do what we do. And that is talk about sports and travel around the country. And I mean, at that moment, it was an aha moment for me because I was like, wait a second, I get to talk about sports and I get to go everywhere and go to games and this is what I want to do. I can tell stories this way. And then that night I watched Sports Center on ESPN and I remember watching the two sportscasters and I remember saying at that moment I wanted to be the first Indian American on ESPN to talk on Sports Center. My dream the minute I was uh, 14 years old up until, you know, 30 years later and me talking about sports right now on ESPN. That's a great story and I can only imagine how hard it must have been, especially coming from a first generation Indian American family. So how is it like for a 14 year old boy to tell your parents that this is what I want to do? And I'm curious. What was your mom and dad's reaction? <laughs> That's a good question. So, um, and really, really well thought of. Um, for me, the challenge was convincing my parents because there was no one that looked like me that was on TV. So my mom and dad were very supportive of my dreams. Uh, they, they wanted to see if I wanted to keep on doing this. So when I went to college, they helped me pick out the college for broadcasting and communications. Um, but at the same time, uh, I had to still let them know that I was going to work really, really hard. And it was tough. It, but the best thing is that my mom and dad believed in me and my brother as well. My big brother supported me and he made sure that uh, I stayed uh, I stayed the course uh, because it is very challenging. And uh, there are so many people that want to get into TV that, that think it's easy. And, and what it is, it's a lot of hard work. So uh, my, my dad realized that, um, that I could do this when I was in college, when he saw me work uh, as, a, as an intern uh, on a TV show, and that's when he, he believed in me. And my mom from the beginning has always supported me. So uh, it's, it's amazing when you can have parents who believe in you and support you like your parents do. Yes, I remember you saying in one of the videos that all you need is one person to believe in you and say yes. Yes, and, and you're 100% right, Nabby. Uh, the, the most important thing, Nabby, is, is you believing in yourself too, right? Because if you don't believe in yourself, then no one else will. So that's the one thing I had to learn that I've got to believe in me first and then others can believe in me. And how you told your mom that I won't be home, but I'll be in your living room every day. I'm sure she's loving that. Yeah, she is. And you know, I mean, I, every time I'm on TV, she sends me a text uh, telling me thank you for coming into my room. So uh, it was it was me making a promise to my mom that no matter what, she'll be able to watch me every, every single night. So it means a lot to me and my mom that I could do that. Great. All right, Kevin. I always wondered watching you, how you have the knowledge on just about every sport. Football, mm -hmm. baseball, basketball, hockey. How do you keep up and be on top of everything happening in the sports world day in and day out? So uh, that's a really good question too. Um, I keep up because of uh, you know it helps me. We have a great team at ESPN of researchers as well that give us information if we have questions. But uh, the one thing is. If you want to do this job, you've got to love the job, right? You've got to love sports because you're going to be talking about sports all the time. So everywhere I go, I'm always surrounded uh, by sports. And I use Twitter on my phone. Who I follow, uh, you know, is very important to me. So I'll follow somebody that, you know, a lot of writers that are in the NBA, that are in the NFL, that are in Major League Baseball, the NHL, the college level. I follow what they have to say, and it keeps me up to date. I watch the games. I watch the highlights. So even on my days off, I'm always involved in it, and that's uh, that's something that's important to me. Yeah, and I know it's not easy. Right now, I closely follow the NFL, and I only get to watch games on the weekends with my school schedule. 
But I try to follow the highlights and understand stats because I do game predictions and post game analysis on my channel. So nice. yeah, yeah, it's not magic to be able to talk about every single sport. A lot of hard work goes behind it. Yeah, so I want to ask you then, what would be your prediction for the AFC and the NFC Championship games as we get ready for them tomorrow? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to prepare for because I'm doing it today. So I think the Bucks will win the Packers. Okay. Because they and can you tell me why? What, do, is there one reason why you picked the, the Bucks over the Packers? You see yesterday against Drew, I mean, last week against Drew Brees, their defense was crazy good. That's a great, great point. Uh, that will help, of course, Tom Brady. Now, here's my other son. This is Noah, who is six years old. He's also into sports as well. So, where are we on the AFC game? I want to know, are you picking the Chiefs or the Bills? Chiefs or the Bills on... This is a close one. I can't pick between Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Ooh, is Patrick Mahomes coming back or not? That's the question. He is. He got cleared, so he's going to start the game. So, Abby. Yeah. Tell me your breakdown. Who do you think is going to win? Um, Stefan Diggs to Allen. That's a good matchup. But what about um, Patrick Mahomes to Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey? That's a uh, great point. Exactly. And so, and it sounds teams. like you're leaning towards the Chiefs. Yeah, because special teams too. Remember, did you see Nicole Hardman all the way for the punt return touchdown? Again, Excellent he observation. Special teams could play a very big role, and Hardman has some speed. So we'll see if that uh, that could be the difference in this game. But now Le'Veon Bell's still there, but Le'Veon Bell's a good rusher, but I think Edward Solaire is a bit better. Good observation. Very good observation. Cause very tough. Well, uh, now this is on your YouTube channel, right? You make yeah. these picks? Yeah. All right. I, I can't wait to watch it tomorrow because I know you're going to do a lot of research later on the day to, uh, before you make the picks. Yeah. Okay. So speaking of hard work, can you talk a little bit about behind the scenes of your show? As I heard you say, that sometimes it could take up to even nine hours planning, executing, and shooting for one episode. So, it's another very good question. So, behind the scenes, we will have, uh, if I'm on the 6 p.m. Sports Center like I am Monday through Friday, at noon, we have a show meeting. In that show meeting, we have producers, coordinating producers, we have a director, we have graphics producers, we have researchers, we have the other anchor that's with me. We all come together and we have production assistants and we all discuss the topics, the big topics of the day. So the producer's job after the meeting from 12.30 to 2 is to put the ideas together and put together a show. So all of that, we have about 10 to 15 people working together behind the scenes and we have a production assistants that that put together the videos that you're going to see we have the guests that we get ready and at six o'clock you know after we're, we're done writing everybody all the producers look at our, our our writing and then we go on the air so there's a lot of build up and how i've uh, i mean how i've described it is um you know how you have the quarterback, but he has to rely on the offensive line and the wide receivers and the running back, and everybody has to play a role, and the coaches give you the play. And so the producer will give me the play, and then I'm, as the anchor, playing the quarterback, but I need the line to protect me. So I need people to protect me and make sure everybody does their job so then I could you know, give the ball to the running back or give the ball to the wide receiver. That's like me giving the ball to the analyst and doing the interviews. And so we have a director, we have camera people um, behind the scenes. So all of us are working together to make sure this is uh, um, complete. Yeah, and ESPN should really do a behind the scenes episode so everyone gets to know and appreciate the amount of work that goes behind the scenes. You know, that's a, that's a really smart uh, observation. And, and if you look on, I think, Google or YouTube, you'll find uh, we did a show where they, they, you went behind the scenes and you saw how we put the, uh, together a sports center. You should, uh, you should try and watch that. I think you'll learn a lot about uh, behind the scenes, all the people that are involved that make us look good. Okay. I have some rapid fire questions for you. Let's do it. Okay. What's your favorite sport? Ooh. Ooh. What, what is it to, to watch or to play? Which one? 
anyone. So I love watching football, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I love playing football. And we also love playing basketball, right? And following basketball. But I would, I would lean football. College football and the NFL. My favorite thing is football. And I really like basketball, too. Basketball is one of my favorite sports. I follow basketball a lot, too. Yeah, so tell me then. Who's your favorite uh, basketball team? Uh, Celtics. Um, I want Boston to win. They have Jason Tatum. I know. Jaylen okay. Brown. So then, Who's your, no, 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 I, I, I love it because you know, we're the Sixers, you're the Celtics, that's a lot of fun. Who's your favorite football team? Patriots. Uh, at least it's not the Cowboys. Ah, uh, yeah, because we, we're Eagles fans, so it's at least. But uh, they've won a lot of Super Bowls with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, yep. so he's had a good run. I heard you sing, fly, Eagles fly on the road to victory. You yes. must be thrilled with the 2018 Eagles win, and I know you were part of the parade. Yes, it was great. It was uh, it was actually a dream come true because I grew up watching the Eagles with my dad and my brother and my mom, and uh, that's how I got into sports, and that's why I fell in love with it. So to be able to cover a parade uh, celebrating the first ever Super Bowl was amazing, uh, and these two boys love uh, to sing Fly, Eagles, Fly. As, and obviously, you can see Noah's shirt with has the Eagles. So, so it was amazing for our whole family to uh, to, to watch the Eagles and see what they uh, what they did on that fantastic season. I'm sorry they beat your Patriots, but you had already beaten us, uh, you know, in 2006 in Jacksonville, yeah, and you also have a lot of rings. Yeah, it was my favorite team versus your favorite team. Yes, exactly. Okay, next question. Who is the one person you really wish to have on your show? Hmm. That's a really good question. Uh, uh, I say Juju. Juju Smith Schuster. Oh that's who Juju you would Smith want on Sports Center. Um, who would you want on Sports Center? Yeah. Seth. He likes Seth Curry, so maybe Seth Curry. I, I think. Um, so I. The, the guy right now I'd love to have on Sports Center right now, I think would be really cool, would be Joel Embiid, because oh. he's a lot of fun, and uh, he's playing like an MVP right now, so it would be it'd be interesting to ask him questions about, you know, how this year is different for him, and having a new coach, and, and what's it like now um, to kind of be overlooked, and now you have to go out there each and every night to, to, where you have to prove uh, you know, that people were saying, ah, you know, maybe Joel's uh, not committed. And now you could see that he's completely committed. So I think I think that would be a really good guest to have because also he has great personality. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I would pick him or another guy I would pick, Patrick Mahomes, because I've had the chance to talk to Patrick and Patrick's a lot of fun. Yeah. That, um, you know, Joel Embley, I think he um, scored 40 plus points against the Celtics. He did. Okay. Great, maybe you'll be me one day. <laughs> that would be great. Okay, who is your role model, a person who influenced you? Uh, so I had a couple role models. Um, my, my mom was my, my role model. My older brother was my role model. Um, my dad was a role model. So they, they were great examples. In TV, there was a guy that uh, that I looked up to. His name was Gary Papa. He was in Philadelphia. He was on the air at the ABC station, and I later interned with him. And I looked up to him. Um, right now, like uh, you know, uh, in TV would probably be Reese Davis. Uh, guys that uh, I work with that have been here a lot longer than me that I could learn from and watch how they how uh, how they do it every single day. Uh, also, uh, another role model for me was Mahatma Gandhi, and I still uh, I still read his books, and 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 I'm reminded every day about his impact on my life and my family's life, and and how he uh, played such a big role in so many um, in so many people. So um, there's there's a lot of people that I look up to. I just take a little bit of somebody here, a little bit of somebody there, and then I put it together, and that helps me. Yeah, my role model is my mom. That's a good role model, trust me. Moms are the best. Okay, what is your favorite thing to do with your kids? 
My favorite thing to do with my kids. Watch football? Probably, uh, probably watch football or play basketball or have a catch outside. We have a lot of catches. Uh, we also collect baseball cards, football and basketball cards, and we have a lot of fun doing that. Anything we could do to have fun together and laugh, uh, that's, that's, that's my favorite thing with the kids. Okay. My favorite thing to do with my um, parents is play football, just get them catches and like... That's a good one! That's a lot of fun, right? No. Okay. Last one. This is a tough one, okay? Okay. Will you let your kid watch six straight hours of Sports Center every day? You know why I'm asking this. <laughs> Would I let them do it? Um... I, I think uh, the one thing that's great, I, I think they'll watch uh, about an hour or two. The one thing, the cool thing is they'll they'll watch NBA TV for highlights. They'll, they're on YouTube watching NFL highlights. I would let them because I think they, they, they enjoy it and they learn stuff from it. And uh, maybe every now and then they could see their dad on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, Kevin. I want to wrap this up with one last question. Okay. Everyone has a dream, and you showed how to make that dream a reality. What is the message you want to give to every kid out there with a dream? That includes me too. Okay, so um, I would always tell uh, to kids and, and young students in high school and college that uh, having a dream is, is the most important thing. But if you want to realize your dream, it requires a lot of hard work and and a belief in yourself. You have to believe in yourself first before anybody's going to believe in you. And the one thing that uh, I was really lucky to have is I had people that believed in me, but I had to believe in myself first. And uh, I tried to outwork everybody. There are more people that are uh, talented, more talented than me, that are better than me. But I promise you that I will outwork everybody because I love what I do and I believe in what I do. So every single day, it's go to work, make sure you're the best that you could be. And um, and for me, have fun. Because if you could have fun while, while pursuing your dream, there's nothing better. So that would be my advice to you. It would be to work hard, to believe in yourself, and have fun while you're doing it. Okay, great message, Kevin. And all my friends watching this, that's Kevin Nagandi for you all. A trailblazer in the field with an inspiring story overcoming all the odds. Kevin, two words resonate to me from your 2015 Temple University. Perseverance conquers. Yes. That's great. Thank you for watching that, by the way. I appreciate that. Perseverance does conquer. And you are a tall standing picture of it. Fly, Kevin, fly, and keep on flying high. Thank you. That was very, very nice. Thank you for uh, the kind words. Kevin, thank you so much for coming on my show today. Hey.